In the previous video, we have come up with a definition of a convergent sequence. Here, it is useful to note that there is a certain degree of flexibility in this definition in the following sense. If we fix a constant c, which is positive, then a n is convergent to a, if and only if, for all epsilon greater than zero, there exists n a natural number, such that little n is greater than or equal to n, implies that the absolute value of a n minus a is less than c times epsilon. We notice that this definition is only different from the definition of a convergent sequence only in the last statement, where the absolute value of a n minus a can be less than any positive multiple of epsilon instead of just epsilon. This will make the process of proving that a sequence is convergent a little bit easier. The proof of this proposition is surprisingly easy. For the if part, if we fix any epsilon greater than zero, we can pick epsilon prime, which equals epsilon divided by c, which is still positive. Then there exists a natural number n such that little n is greater than or equal to n implies that the absolute value of a n minus a is less than c times epsilon prime, which is by definition epsilon. So the definition of a convergent sequence is satisfied. Conversely, we fix any epsilon greater than zero and pick epsilon prime, which equals c times epsilon. Then there exists a natural number n such that little n is greater than or equal to n implies that the absolute value of a n minus a is less than epsilon prime, which equals c times epsilon. And this completes the proof. Let's look at an example to check our understanding of the terminology. Consider a sequence of real numbers a n. And the two statements, for all natural numbers n, there exists an epsilon greater than zero, such that the absolute value of a n is less than epsilon. And also, there exists epsilon greater than zero, such that for all natural numbers n, the absolute value of a n is less than epsilon. Notice that two statements only differ in the order of the appearance of n and epsilon. Let's determine which of the following is true for these two statements. A a n converges to zero. B, a n is bounded. C, it always holds. D, it never holds. E, none of the above. For the first statement, the answer is C, it always holds, because the fact that epsilon comes after n implies that epsilon depends on n and can change according to n. So if we are given natural number n, we can take epsilon to be the absolute value of a n plus 1, so that it is always greater than the absolute value of a n. For the second statement, the answer is b, a n is bounded, because we know that epsilon is a given number, such that a n lies between negative epsilon and epsilon, for n, which means that a n is bounded by epsilon. Let's see an example of trying to prove that a sequence is convergent using the definition. We want to show that 1 over n converges to 0 as n tends to infinity. That is, for epsilon greater than 0, we need to find a natural number n such that the absolute value of 1 over n minus 0, which equals 1 over n, is less than epsilon for all little n greater than or equal to n. We can draw a rough picture of how 1 over n behaves as n increases. Since 1 over n is decreasing, for any given epsilon, we can always find capital N such that 1 over n is less than epsilon. And for greater values of n, 1 over n will continue to be less than epsilon. So for all little n greater than or equal to n, 1 over little n is less than or equal to 1 over n, which is less than epsilon. This is what we want. Now we can write a formal proof as follows. We fix any epsilon greater than zero, and pick any natural number n such that n is greater than 1 over epsilon. And we know that such n exists by the Archimedean axiom, and n depends on epsilon. Then, little n is greater than or equal to n implies that the absolute value of 1 over n minus zero which equals 1 over n, is less than or equal to 1 over n, which is less than epsilon. This completes the proof. 
In general, we can use the following steps to prove that a sequence a n converges to a limit a by definition. First, we fix any epsilon greater than zero. Second, we simplify the expression, the absolute value of a n minus a, assuming that we know what the limit a is. Third, we solve the inequality, the absolute value of a n minus a is less than epsilon for n to get that n is greater than some function f of epsilon. 4. We choose a capital N which is greater than f of epsilon. In this case, little n is greater than or equal to n implies that little n is greater than f of epsilon. 5. We rewrite the steps in the third step in the reverse direction to prove that when n is greater than or equal to n, implies that the absolute value of a n minus a is less than epsilon. Let's use the steps we have just learned to prove a harder example. Suppose we want to prove that the sequence a n, which is n plus 5 over n plus 1, converges to 1 as n tends to infinity. To start with, we simplify the expression, the absolute value of a n minus 1, this equals the absolute value of n plus 5 over n plus 1 minus 1, which equals 4 over n plus 1. Now we solve the inequality of 4 over n plus 1 less than epsilon. This is equivalent to 4 over epsilon is less than n plus 1, which is in turn equivalent to n is greater than 4 over epsilon minus 1. So we can choose capital N to be greater than this value, and complete the proof. We fix any epsilon greater than zero and choose capital N which is greater than 4 over epsilon minus 1. Now, for all little n which is greater than or equal to n, n is greater than 4 over epsilon minus 1 implies that n plus 1 is greater than 4 minus epsilon, which implies that 4 over n plus 1 is less than epsilon, which implies that the absolute value of n plus 5 over n plus 1 minus 1 is less than epsilon, and this completes the proof. Let's prove another example, which is a bit more tricky. We want to prove that the sequence a n, which equals n plus 2 over n minus 2, converges to 1 as n tends to infinity. As before, we simplify the expression, the absolute value of a n minus 1. It equals the absolute value of n plus 2 over n minus 2, minus 1, which equals 4 over n minus 2, where we have removed the absolute sign, assuming that n is greater than 2. Now, we set up the inequality 4 over n minus 2 is less than epsilon, and solve for n. This is equivalent to 4 over epsilon is less than n minus 2, which is equivalent to n is greater than 4 over epsilon plus 2, again assuming that n is greater than 2. Now, for our capital N, not only that we need it to be greater than this expression, but we also need it to be greater than 2. So for the proof, after fixing any epsilon greater than 0, we pick capital N to be greater than the maximum of 4 over epsilon plus 2 and 3, so that it is greater than this expression of epsilon and also greater than 2. Now, for all little n greater than or equal to n, n is greater than 4 over epsilon plus 2 implies that n minus 2 is greater than 4 over epsilon implies that 4 over n minus 2 is less than epsilon, where we have used the fact that n is greater than 2. This implies that the absolute value of n plus 2 over n minus 2 minus 1 is less than epsilon, and this completes the proof. We consider one more example which is the sequence n squared minus 5 over n cubed minus 50. We want to show that a n converges to 0 as n tends to infinity. So we simplify the expression, the absolute value of a n minus 0, which equals the absolute value of n squared minus 5 over n cubed minus 50. Now we are stuck because we cannot solve the inequality the absolute value of n squared minus 5 over n cubed minus 50 is less than epsilon for n. In this case, we can modify the steps 3 and 4 as follows. 
for the third step, we need to find b n, which is greater than or equal to zero, and n naught, which is a natural number, such that when n is greater than or equal to n naught, implies that the absolute value of a n minus a is less than b n, where it is easy enough to solve the inequality b n is less than epsilon for n. In this case, we get n is greater than f of epsilon for some function f of epsilon. For the fourth step, we let capital N to be greater than the maximum of f of epsilon and n naught. Then, little n is greater than or equal to n implies that the absolute value of a n minus a is less than b n, which implies that the absolute value of a n minus a is less than epsilon. For our example, we want to remove the absolute sign first. We can do so by requiring that the numerator n squared minus 5 and the denominator n cubed minus 50 are both positive, which happens for n greater than or equal to 4. Next, we overestimate n squared minus 5 and underestimate n cubed minus 50 under the condition that n is greater than or equal to n naught for some natural number n naught so that the absolute value of n squared minus 5 over n cubed minus 50 is less than b n, which is a simpler expression. To do this, we overestimate n squared minus 5 using n squared, and we know that n squared minus 5 is less than n squared for all natural numbers n, and we underestimate n cubed minus 50 by one half n cubed, and we know that n cubed minus 50 is greater than one half n cubed, if and only if one half n cubed is greater than 50, which is equivalent to n cubed is greater than 100, which is true when n is greater than or equal to 5. So, for n is greater than or equal to 5, the absolute value of n squared minus 5 over n cubed minus 50 is the same without the absolute sign, and it is less than n squared over one half n cubed, because we know that the numerator is bigger and the denominator is smaller. This expression can be simplified to just 2 over n. In this case, the n naught is equal to 5, and the bn is equal to 2 over n, in the steps outlined before. Here, we know that it is easy to solve bn is less than epsilon, because 2 over n is less than epsilon happens when n is greater than 2 over epsilon. So in addition to 5, capital N has to be greater than 2 over epsilon. Now we can write the proof. We fix any epsilon greater than 0, and let capital N to be greater than the maximum of 2 over epsilon and 5. Now, for all n which is greater than or equal to n, n is greater than or equal to 5, implies that n cubed minus 50 is greater than 1 half n cubed. So, the absolute value of a n minus 0 which is the absolute value of n squared minus 5 over n cubed minus 50, is equal to itself without the absolute sign, and is less than n squared over 1 half n cubed, which can be simplified to 2 over n, which is less than or equal to 2 over capital N, and is less than 2 over 2 over epsilon, which equals epsilon, and this completes the proof. Now, we introduce the definition of convergence for a sequence of complex numbers. Let a n be a complex sequence for natural numbers n. We say that a n converges to a complex number a if and only if, for all epsilon greater than zero, there exists n a natural number such that n is greater than or equal to n implies that the absolute value of a n minus a, which equals the square root of the real part of a n minus a squared plus the imaginary part of a n minus a squared is less than epsilon. This is equivalent to the real part of a n converges to the real part of a and the imaginary part of a n converges to the imaginary part of a. Let's see an example. We want to prove that the sequence e to the i n over n cubed minus n squared minus 6 converges to 0 as n tends to infinity. We simplify the absolute value of a n minus a, which equals the absolute value of e to the i n over n cubed minus n squared minus 6, 
which equals the absolute value of 1 over n cubed minus n squared minus 6. Using the trick introduced earlier, we underestimate n cubed minus n squared minus 6 by an expression cn, so that n cubed minus n squared minus 6 is greater than cn is greater than 0, which implies that the absolute value of 1 over n cubed minus n squared minus 6 is less than 1 over cn. As before, we replace the expression by the dominant term n cubed multiplied by a number smaller than 1, for example, 1 half. Notice that for n greater than or equal to 4, n cubed minus n squared minus 6 is greater than 1 half n cubed. So, for n greater than or equal to 4, the absolute value of 1 over n cubed minus n squared minus 6 is less than 1 over 1 half n cubed, which equals 2 over n cubed. Also, this expression is less than epsilon, if and only if n is greater than the cube root of 2 over epsilon. Now we can write the proof. Fix any epsilon greater than 0, and let n to be greater than the maximum of the cube root of 2 over epsilon and 4. Now, for all n greater than or equal to n, n is greater than 4, implies that n cubed minus n squared minus 6 is greater than 1 half n cubed, and the absolute value of a n minus 0, which equals the absolute value of 1 over n cubed minus n squared minus 6, is less than 2 over n cubed, is less than or equal to 2 over capital N cubed, is less than 2 over 2 over epsilon, which equals epsilon, and this completes the proof.